Bam! If you watch Sunday's video, you're probably richer today. What's up, pickled traders? I'm Lee Ryder, and in this video, we're gonna do an update video to the analysis video we did on Sunday. Pretty much all those trading plans that we made on Sunday have been working out great. We've had a downside move, which we predicted that turned into what we thought was a pullback, and it looks like it is now extending back up to the high side. So let's get into it. Now you'll notice on the chart here, I have a green bar. This is where we did our analysis last time. So on all these charts going forward, when you see the green bar, that's what that means. That was Sunday's video and we're stepping forward. Now also on sun, on last video, we were on the one hour time frame. This time we're on the 15 minute. Um, so I just wanna show because you're gonna get a lot more resolution and it's gonna be easier to see exactly kind of the minute details and you're gonna see the power of trading like this and how predictive it is. It seems like almost magic. Now, here's where we were and I had talked about, we had been overextended now on the Dow Jones and the whole world was looking like it needed to have a pullback. So we did actually come lower and we found support here and here and notice this is at the fractal Bollinger Band. And now this is statistical resistance and just like I always say, this is where we wanna start looking for trades because this is where the market is either way overbought or way oversold and really these are the best places to be buying. And this is exactly why, because you have a very high chance that price is gonna do one of two things. It's gonna mean revert to this midpoint, midpoint, or it's gonna go all the way back to the other side and you got double opportunity here actually, because not only did it go to the midpoint first, it then came back to the bottom and then broke all the way to the upside. So generally when we're trading in this style, this is what we're doing. We're basically trading edge to edge. We're not trying to catch the runs. Sometimes we get lucky and we get in one of those long ones, but generally that is not the case. We're just trading edge to edge. We want that guaranteed money. And this is just another example. Now also you'll see the prime was coming out and I said this is why I thought we'd get a lower move and now the prime went all the way down below the 30 and we really want to watch is it going to come out that's really what we're watching for next now the prediction is yes it is right because as the rest of the world I said that we thought there would be a big lift up and it looks like that lift is continuing this prime will be the thing that indicates it we also once again we got our double bubbles up against resistance and now we are breaking out fully as we extend past this midpoint. So everything is looking really good, just like we talked about on Sunday. And it's amazing how you can do that days in advance, set up your plan, and then just plan your trades. It's really low stress. Okay, so let's take a look at now the S&P. And same thing, this is where we were. And I said we would probably have a move back to, now we're on the 15 minute, but on the one hour to the midpoint. And really we did the same thing, right? We came back and we found support all through here. And you can see once again, we got our bubble, our bubble here up against the midpoint. And now we are continuing higher uh, as we break above this midpoint. Now, are we gonna break out above? If the Dow is to be the leading indicator, then yes, we probably will. So that's really what I'm watching now is that like, are the rest, is everything gonna start to be correlated? And it looks like it is definitely after the Fed meeting. So that's the S&P. Once again, we're back here saying how the prime is at a high cycle and it still has a ways to go to the downside, but it looks like it's mean reverting right around that 50 level, which is what I said last video is one we need to watch. Moving on here now to the Nikkei 225. And this is a really great example where we had talked about, we had been at an extreme range. We're getting massive wicking, which once again, maybe go take the training or sign up for the training or look at the other videos. But that wicking, especially when it's in both directions and kind of at the end of a run, up against these levels is a sign to us that we're gonna get price reversal and so we're definitely paying attention to that. And it's no different here. Now we did come back up and retest, but we went all the way back to the other side. I said last time that I thought we would do that uh, and we generally do. So we did and now we're heading back up. Is this gonna keep going up? We don't know, but if it follows the rest of the world, we think so. So that's kind of what we're watching with the Nikkei. Next is H, the HK50. Uh, now we had talked about this was one of the few ones that had been moving lower and we thought it would continue moving lower and it did just that, right? So this is, this is it right here. And we came up and we found resistance up at the midpoint and we've just been continuing lower. Now this is not super tradable just because we have low volume 
Uh, we're not getting a lot of volatility, but it's just one to watch because it is an important indice. Okay, up next we have the FTSE, and this is a great one too, because I had talked about us being overextended. Said that once you do that, you likely want to come back either to the midpoint uh, and find support or come back to the other side. Now, since the rest of the world looked like it was moving up, I said very likely that we're just gonna come back to the midpoint. And that looks like that's exactly what we did. We found support here, here, and here. And now we're back up to the races. And if we break up, we're likely to see a much bigger move than this here. Same thing, Prime is still above high in the cycle. And also the SGA, Gamma Prime also looks good. So once again, it looks like the FTSE is gonna continue with that upper move. And just a testament to these good tools and this good analysis technique, all you have to do is plug in a good mindset and you're off to the races. Next is Euro stocks, and this is once again the same as FTSE. We had this breakout, and actually we had one a little bit previous the same way. I had talked about being high in the prime cycle and that we would need to come back and retest, and it looks like we came back all the way and found support here, 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 and here. And while it wasn't exactly at our extreme midpoint, when you start to understand how these candle patterns work and what that wicking, because really we just focus on the wicking and the engulfing candle, but we'll get several opportunities to show that this was our floor, even though we didn't fully extend to statistical support. And that's okay, that's the way it happens sometime. But you'll notice we did come to that 50% point uh, on the prime, and it looks like we're turning back up, so that's great. We're definitely turning back up on the histogram, and you'll see again the double bubble at resistance. Ah, I just love these tools. They're so great. They make things so easy. They, let it, they make it really clear which direction things are heading. So yeah, I just love it. Yeah, I can't say enough good things. This is the CAC 40. This is the France index. And yep, same thing, we had this breakout, here's our video, and I said we probably wanna come back either to this midpoint or to the, to the full extreme. And I said we would probably come to the midpoint because Europe is so strong right now. Europe, uh, the, the, I think the dollar uh, weakness is really helping, and so all of Europe is really being buoyed, and I did not see that price fully extending back to here, which it didn't, and it looks like we have found support several times and we are breaking at least above this previous range which leads me to believe we're heading back to that extreme level which is as you know this is how price moves so that's really great about our tools and our system is that we're working with like the physics of how price moves so really great and just another testament here also gamma prime looking good we have found support on the sga above 50 which is great our histogram has started growing up and once again, prime above 50. So this is everything good, A-OK, -okay. oh, uh, uh, for a long. So that's good. We were, st we were looking at the hourly, so we had our breakout here, um, and we were looking at the hourly before. Now this is the 15 minute, so yeah, we just broke below the 15, and I said likely we're going to compress up and get support down here at the bottom, which we did. Now, I also said that because if you look at the prime, it is very high in the cycle. This generally means uh, that we're gonna mean revert to the other side, so we wanna be careful. Now, has this happened? No, but like I said, we went to that 50% point, and that usually acts like very strong resistance if this is only a pullback. So I really like to watch when the prime is bouncing off 50, if the price action also looks like it is at a pullback and we're at statistical resistance or statistical support, it's a great sign that the move is gonna continue. So that's the DAX, GP looking good, histogram turning up, prime turning back up, all good things for the long. Okay, last thing, gold spot. Now we had this big dump out in gold and I said that I thought this meant risk on again and I still do, but gold is pretty much flat right now. I thought it would move lower, but it's coming up to find resistance up here at this midpoint, but you'll see super tight range since we talked, but the prime still very low. Now there's something to say here. The more time it spins, the prime I'm talking about, it spins in this lower region, you're getting less and less likely that that'll continue and that you need to have some mean reversion. So I imagine our volatility will get crushed to a point where we will, you know, pr quickly break up uh, to some lower level and then mean revert back down. Um, but we'll just have to wait and see how that plays out. This is gonna be a good one to watch. Like I said, gold, good canary in the coal mine, especially around shifting um, you know, reigns of money. Uh, crypto is also another good one that we're watching that's acting the same way where it'll get correlated to one market um, and we can use that as a tool 
uh, to predict. So last, I'm not going to cover all crypto, but I will cover total because I think it's important. And same thing, we had this big breakout, I, and this is where we did our video. And I said I thought we would come back down to this bottom side before returning and going back up with the rest of the world. I, I used that evidence because the prime was still down here, uh, looking like it was going to turn back down, as it did, right? So really we want to see the prime coming out. Um, we did dump a bit lower, we lost about $300 billion from the market, but we did find support here. Um, and, and likely I think just like gold, you're going to get this crushed volatility uh, as we figure out which direction we're going. If the rest of the world starts crushing it in TradFi, I imagine gold and crypto will take another dive lower, but we will see. I hope that was helpful. We'll see you in the next one.